So, you know, well, hello, good morning. Um, I'm Russell Dudley. I'm the gallery director here at uh, the Tahoe Gallery, and I work with Dan Ruby to put together, curate the show, um, and we're in front of Dan's face. Let's see, we have, this is all handmade. Like it, 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 it's sort of confusing because it, it you know, it, it looks so pro, but it, it's really all handmade. And, uh, this is a helmet. This helmet is an actually a real helmet. I don't remember exactly where it came from. It, it has sort of the full working shields and I think the boots are super cool, um, but I don't know much about them. The official number on this is um, 1.5 by 3 by 3, and it's a scale of 1 to 1. This, this wall is the, ho the home of uh, a, a kind of triptych in involved with um, a dead astronaut painting, a model, and you know, this is called Beachhead on the Moon. It's got a really awesome green, um, it goes well with the red. Uh, obviously, the background is uh, the sort of uh, starting point for our notation system. The, the destination on the book is eleven point five by two by three, and it's a one to one because it is a book, and it, I mean it is what it is. So pretty much half of the one to one. You could probably start with a title, which is Viking Lander Imaging Investigation, Picture Catalog of Primary Mission Experiment Data. There's a lot. There's a lot of really cool stuff. Yeah, really, really, really good footage of. Um, this is actually what we based our model over there on, this particular picture. We, we looked at that and we looked at the rocks and the kind of mounding and stuff and you, you'll, you'll see in the model later on how accurate our model actually is to this picture. We now have, um, we're at uh, 1273. 1253 and 973, which is probably a misprint. These are uh, another one of the sort of super stunning things about the show. That these light boxes make uh, numerous woodworkers trouble. These have not been um, exhibited since at least 1965. They're real paraphernalia from the uh, basin of the planetarium. This is uh, Sunrise, this is the Gemini 5 sped eastward at 70,500 miles per hour on the minutes left before the sun makes its appearance. This is the Andromeda Galaxy, and um, one of the more interesting comments I heard looking at this had to do with how close all of the stuff seemed, all of, all of the stars were bright and light and that kind of stuff, and how inaccurate that was to the actual occurrence, which is those little bright lights are a long, long, long ways apart. I really like this. I think it's kind of very nice part of the show. Um, this particular diptych, which doesn't appear to exist at the moment, is, uh, I, I don't know how to explain that one actually. Let me turn the other one on for just a second. The diptych works with a movie from the planetarium when it was in its original situation, which was this atmosphere. The number of slides called from kind of similar basement sources of space, of shapes, and of things that, that, that you can't quite comprehend. To me, when I'm looking at this particular... Yeah, that's great. 
for placement, you, you could slowly gather that, that it was kind of uh, the smallest distance that we could create a, a real uh, uh, space mission in. Let's see. Uh, this, this we referenced earlier from, from, from the book. It, it's, it's our Marscape with... with um, a couple of rover burnouts over here. But the scale of this one is actually, I think, relatively important to remember, which is one to three hundred. We, we're we're now <laughs> at uh, position three fifteen three, and this is. This is an abbreviated version of the history of Dan Ruby's space program. So it has all the components of a, of a real space program. It has, um, it has like the launcher. Chuck Leviton, our, our, our science guy who shoots some rockets off around here, was, oh, yeah. was very impressed. <laughs> and if I can remember, I think it was something like, oh my god, that's really over the top. It, it has... Um, Notes having to do with the different launches in terms of pressures and atmospheres and winds and what happened. You can see where things started and where things ended and which way the wind was going and stuff like that. And also, I have been past White Lake numerous times without realizing it was a test facility. There's super awesome stress fractures from breaking the speed of sound. Um, there's little, little, little changes in sort of wing design. I believe that fin actually um, came apart not upon sort of acceleration but deceleration and, and coming back to Earth. This one is uh, in position 014-4 and it's uh, a scale of 1 to 72. And it's, ob it's obviously a triptych. It, there's nothing super spectacular about it. It's a, it's a really great picture of a satellite, um, a really awesome picture of something which if you walk up you might not know exactly what it is, but it's definitely awesome because it has a nice big round ball with some lights or holes or things. And, and I like that this is, you know, th th this is sign. It's hard to see through the dust, but, but there's, an actual, there's an actual person who kind of Authored that and made that. The, 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 the linchpin on this is, is our little piece of paper. I'll, 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 I'll read it because it, 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 it helps explain the visual stuff. It says um, this begins with the astronauts leaving their quarters, the lift off, a glance back at the Earth, the landing with Armstrong's famous words quote, That's one small step for a man, 
one giant leap for mankind, unquote, in his own voice, as opposed to mine, and the TV pictures that were seen on Earth as broadcast from the moon. Uh, then the best of all the still photographs uh, on the moon, and the return and pickup of the capsule, and finally the president on board uh, the recovery ship. I'm pretty sure that was Nixon. In, in this position, we have a kind of two, two pieces of one. We have Quentin's rocket, which is in 0, 10, and uh, 2.5. And it's also obviously one to one because this really is Quentin's rocket. And then we also have an exploded drawing, which um, uses as its basis um, a, a group project of, of this particular rocket. In, you, you can see, if, if you look closely, like the beds for the astronauts um, and, and the food sources and, uh, of course, the window to, to look at space in. You, know, you need to do that. We also have some booster rockets and, and some fins. You know, at, at, as in all of the exploded sort of drawings, there, the, these other pictures refer to, to other components or ideas or, or sort of emotional states that somebody might find themselves in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in space. This one is actually, and I'll, I'll have to, we'll have to do a, a, a little cut and bring back to, <laughs> this is maybe one of my personal favorites because um, I received my art form in the mail two days ago, and there's almost an identical picture to this uh, by Tom Sachs right now. And there's a couple minor elements that are still uh, missing. One actually not minor at all, which is Jupiter up there, and I forget what the scale of Jupiter is, but um, it's obviously really big. The, the car, which, which, which has, has the Russian space helmet, um, and the title of the show is, this is what uh, Higgs boson looks like. And the, our, our, one of our ideas was, was sort of like, well, and, until they figure out what it really looks like, then there's no reason to think that it couldn't look exactly like this. To me, conceptually as a whole, it is just an absolute hoot to think that this show, this room, might unite large and small physics. For as accessible as this show is, there's absolutely as straightforward and deadpan as all the presentation is. It's really referring to something that is of, uh, you know, almost mystical proportion. An another element to the central production of this show is the idea, or not really the idea, it's more like it, it, it was really fun to work with Dan and to make a show that didn't have any artists in it. Like, I think the show without artists is, is actually much cooler than yeah, some sort of an all collaboration.